Hello! So I'm really hoping it works this time. I did film this video earlier on and the camera was just zooming um, kind of constantly in and out of my face which was really irritating me. Um, so I went to yoga and I've come back now and I'm hoping that um, the camera isn't doing that this time. Um, I apologise if you can hear any traffic. I'm in my living room um, and I live on a main road and I have single glazing so you can just hear everything as if it's in my living room so you get to experience what it's like to live in my house. Um, so today is a video that I've wanted to do for a while but haven't really felt like I had enough clarity um, to do so until recently. If you're here from my Instagram, which I'm assuming most of you are, you'll know that I love to talk about I don't love to talk about it, but I talk a lot about my mental health, my depression, um, what it does. I like to be open about it just because I think that if this disease, this illness that I have can do anything good, aka help someone else, maybe either just feel normal, feel less alone, feel more confident in talking about things, then that is a blessing because as I'm sure you can imagine having depression or having any mental illness is it was really tough um, and just to be able I guess in my mind to kind of um, qualify it with a positive thing is a really big deal and it makes me feel better so today I'll just be giving you kind of a lowdown over my my journey with depression where I'm at now and um, I went to the doctor today for the first time in a couple of years to talk to my doctor about it so it feels quite poignant to talk about it with you so i guess my depression first started or i started to notice um feeling very teary and upset all the time which is um a symptom of depression was in 2016 probably in like february march time i was or actually even later than that, maybe more like May, I was going through a breakup with um, a guy who I'd been in a, in a quite a short relationship with and um, I, I was very hormonal, I was crying a lot. The breakdown of my relationship with this guy wasn't, it wasn't pleasant, it was very toxic, very nasty from um, his end and it just set something off inside of me and after we broke up, I just cried all the time. I kind of got really obsessive over this guy. Um, and it took me a very, very long time to get over him and I only really got over him. Um, Christmas just gone, so Christmas 2017, because of a situation that happened with him. So he was still in my life. But then um, my depression got worse when I went home that summer, summer 2016, I went back to Devon to stay with my mum for two months because I'd had a knee operation and I couldn't walk. And just not being able to walk, not being able to move, not being able to do anything for myself really threw me into a depression, which I'm sure um, you can completely understand. So after just basically being a dick to my mum, um, she made me go to the doctor and um, I got diagnosed with clinical depression. Um, kind of a reactionary depression to the situation, so situational depression um, and I was put back on the pill just to see if the hormones would kind of level me out a little bit and they seemed to and then I came back to London um, and I was walking again and everything was really good for the next year I guess um, until November and I came off the pill in October of 2017 because I was having visual migraines and um, you, like that's just something that the pill does so as soon as that happens you have to be taken off it and so I was taken off the pill which was fine um, and then I remember like the first day in November I had a really really shit day I wasn't crying I wasn't teary I just felt blank and my depression kind of manifests itself in a couple of ways. One of the ways is that I just feel empty inside, like I don't care about anything, don't care about being alive, don't really care about 
teaching yoga, don't care about my friends, don't care about talking to people. Um, I, yeah, that's one of the ways. Another way is I get very overwhelmed and I shut myself off. Um, so I just like, I can't reply to messages. I cannot reply to emails. Replying to emails makes me feel so stressed. And there's like really simple things that I can totally do and reply to. Like they're not stressful emails, but I just hate replying to them. I'm getting better at this, but that's one thing that I notice that gets very bad when my depression gets bad is responding to emails and to WhatsApp messages. I just can't even open them sometimes, just leave them unopened um, as if they don't exist. Um, so yeah, I had a really bad day um, in November and then a couple more days like started to trickle in a little bit and then I was in Bali in February which was the most incredible trip and then just one day I was in Ubud with my friend Katie and I just felt shit like and um, I felt quite bad for Katie because when you're with somebody who feels shit who like when that person doesn't even understand how they feel like what can that person do there's really nothing that you as that person can do it must be quite hard um, but then I realized like at a certain point oh I'm feeling shit because like today's a bad day um, and that was quite hard because I was in one of the most literally the most beautiful place I've ever been in my entire life and I felt like shit um, so yeah then coming back from Bali was probably when it all hit me the most and I don't know what the connection is with it I think Bali was such an incredible experience and I really loved my time there and I felt more myself than I've ever felt in my entire life and then just coming back into London I literally felt like a caged animal and I just did not want to be here and I was so upset that I was back in London which is crazy because I love living in London for so many different reasons and then since being back it's been very up and down there have been some very bad times I think for about a week particularly after I came back from Bali so I'm messing with my hair a lot this evening I just feel like it doesn't I feel like it's irritating me you're like honey your hair looks fine shut up um <laughs> just I guess my brain's trying to distract me from having to talk about a sensitive topic um yeah so I came back from Bali and about a week after that I just felt really shit and I just did not want to be here I just couldn't believe that I had to stay in London I was so like I can't believe that I have to be here like this is terrible um, and then eventually I sort of got back into the the pattern of it all um, and then I still do get some some really shit days like um, just this Saturday just gone for example I was doing an event with um a company that I really love working with and loads of my friends were at this event and I knew loads of people and then I just had to leave because I didn't want to be around people and this guy kind of cornered me and was talking to me about business and yoga which is really good and he was really nice but I was in my head I was like please don't talk to me I was just like I was just I could not take in information like my brain was just like no shut down and then I was like upset that I didn't have any plans for the afternoon but I didn't want to make any plans for the afternoon I was upset that I didn't have any friends I could go hang out with and then when I realized I had friends I could go hang out with I didn't want to go hang out with them and I just came home and I just sat right over there by my sofa and just watched like I binge watched this tv show on Netflix called Safe which is really good and then I just ended up sobbing for no reason I just started crying I was like I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to feel like life isn't worth living because that's, that's how I feel a lot of the time. I feel like there's no point in my life. I feel very pointless. And it's a really, um, feeling pointless is a really shit thing to feel. Um, so I didn't want to get emotional, but I guess it's an emotional topic and emotions are okay. Um, when it gets bad that's how I feel like I just feel like there's no point in me being here I'm like if I left nobody would miss me um which is ridiculous because of course people would miss me um 
person but that is how it feels a lot of the time it feels like if I left like would anyone really notice that I was gone like, really like a couple of people would but like would, would it make that much of an impact um which now when I'm in like a good mood it's really sad that I feel that way but some days that's how I feel um, and I think being self-employed and freelance is especially difficult because when you have a job that you get out every day at the same time and you go to that job and you probably you probably don't give yourself your tasks like someone else gives you your tasks because you're probably being managed by someone um, it's almost like you have a purpose whereas when you're freelance you have to create that purpose and um, that's something I found particularly hard to manage, manage myself as a freelancer when I have um, depression because it's all up to me, you know? And, and yeah, like I have to go to classes now, always wake up and go to classes. But um, all the admin -y stuff, like I find it really hard sometimes to sit down and like actually get that done because I feel intimidated and daunted by it. And when you feel like there's no point, you're like, why, why am I even bothering doing this stuff? Um, Wow, the video that I recorded earlier on was way less emotional than this. Um, so yeah, that's that's how it is. Um, and I find it really difficult um, when I'm in that frame of mind to talk to people because the thing with like mental health is everyone's everyone's is kind of a different expression. Like it's it feels different for everyone. So when people talk to me about anxiety, like sure I've had anxiety a little bit, but because of my yoga and my meditation, I'm actually really able to manage anxiety fairly well. So when people talk to me about like not being able to leave the house and stuff, I find that difficult. So of course my friends find it difficult to understand how I feel, you know? And then someone else with depression will probably f like find it hard to understand how I feel, right? Um, because it's it's all in here and like it's so hard to quantify what this means you know anyway um, I went to the doctor today which was really good and um, I've never been to the particular doctor there that I went to that I saw today but she was really nice and I just basically said like my mental like I don't feel like me and I'm tired of feeling the way that I feel because I don't feel like myself which a lot of the time I don't I don't feel like me anymore which is really hard because like I'm a, I'm a go-getter I'm like really hard working I'm like I'm quite a motivated individual so for me to feel like this is really like a, a very difficult um and I just told her like everything and she was she was very good and then she said like what do you think will help and I kind of said I don't really know to be honest because before it was just managed by the pill and I obviously can't be there on that anymore I'm not scared of medication because I know that it can, it can help you um, but she said that she, my doctor said I'm not going to put you on anything straight away I don't think that's the answer at all um, especially with depression medication is kind of like a crutch that enables you to kind of get through the really shitty stuff so that you can then deal with your depression and um, because I'm quite self-aware I'm into like self-development, I take time to understand how I feel and because it's not so bad that for example I can't get out of bed it's probably not gonna help um, so she has going, she's referred me for cognitive behavioural therapy, CBT um, which is where you kind of I guess see how you react to things and how then you can change your reaction and um, that's what I understood from it. She's also asked me to like focus on mindfulness, so taking time to sit down in the day and actually just let my thoughts be present and just kind of notice what's coming up. So it's different from meditation where with meditation you're trying to push through those thoughts and find clarity and just find gaps in your um, headspace. Whereas with mindfulness, you're, how she explained it was you're enabling those thoughts to come up so that you can see First of all, the little things like, oh shit, I didn't do my food shopping. Eventually they'll go to one side so that you can find the stuff at the back of your head, which is probably causing the, the, pre the depressed feeling, if it is, you know, to do with um, how my mind works. And then um, she also gave me some counselling 
people um, if I wanted to go down the counselling route, which I am considering, although it's not in the NHS. And then I'm going back to see her in two weeks um, to see how I'm doing. So tomorrow I need to call up and get a CBT appointment, um, which if you're interested, I will happily do another video on. Um, but yeah, I just feel really relieved that I went today. And um, she was just like, well done, well done for coming in. And I guess like, it's hard telling a complete stranger um, how you feel. Like I don't feel like it's hard talking to you because no one else is in the room with me, it's just me talking. Whereas like when you're actually confronted with a human being that you don't know and you're trying to say it to them in like a clinical um, environment, it's quite intimidating but um, she was really helpful so I think like don't be afraid of going to your doctor and I did have a couple of messages from people today saying like my doctor like kind of scoffed at me I was really sarcastic which makes me so sad because that's not how my doctor was at all and I just hate that someone's gonna be put off going because of that one encounter so if one doctor doesn't respond well to you like find another one when I called up and booked my appointment I asked for like, is there a doctor who is specifically interested or knowledgeable in mental health because I mean that's why I'm coming in so I think it's important to maybe ask that because the receptionist might know or they might just know to put you with a doctor who's not a dick because doctors can be dicks <laughs> um, I guess that's going to be everything for now I might do like a general Q&A if that's something you're interested in I'm sorry for crying but um, it's an emotional topic um, I hope you enjoyed I hope this was in focus if it's not I'm going to be so annoyed um, and yeah just thank you so much for watching thank you so much for all of you who engage and comment and make me feel like um, I'm making a difference in your lives because that's why I do all of this um, as well as it being cathartic for me to share so yeah thank you um, if you don't if you don't already subscribe to my channel then please do I'm going to be doing more talky videos like this and yeah have a lovely evening like it not evening I'm assuming it's evening because it's evening here um, like the video if you liked it leave a comment um, and yeah, have a good rest of your day, whatever it is you're doing, whatever you are in the world. Thank you so much.